Ever wonder what the weirdest, scariest, most insane stories come from prison? Well, I wish I wasn't so curious because some of these had me staying awake at night. I'm your host Yusuf and these are 10 scary prison horror stories that actually happened. Anyways, it's time to go to prison. At number 10, something's wrong in the cafeteria. An inmate in a female prison describes one of her experiences in the prison chow hall. There was a woman there. She had tried to wipe out her mother and while the mother was escaping, she ran her over put it in reverse, floored it back over her again, and finally put it in drive over her one last time. The mother was actually extremely harmful and was in the same prison in a different part. The inmate goes on, explaining the odd behavior of the prisoner. The daughter would always have her arms in her shirt. You'd only see her arms when she was sitting, like eating or something. She's across from me one day, eating, and I see her drop a pile of something. I immediately was like, what the heck? You can't have stuff in the chow hall. What is this girl doing? It was kind of loud when she dropped it, so it wasn't laundry. It looked kind of like meat. How and why does she have meat? We're eating spaghetti right now. Suddenly, the inmate realized what the woman dropped. That's her innards. Just falling out of her torso onto the floor. She's struggling to gather all of it. It looks slippery. After that, I noticed her dropping her innards onto the floor on a regular basis and had to stop being around her at all. That's freaky. You'd think that prison doctors would sew her back up. At number nine, a new inmate describes their first week in prison and sitting at the wrong table. The first week of my 12 year prison set was the worst. I was a skinny 20 year old with no criminal history and it takes a while to learn that most people are mostly talk. I accidentally sat at the black table at Chow, made a point of staying there and eating with them when they showed up to avoid offending them, was labeled a race traitor by the whites and was told someone would be coming to hurt me. Nobody came, as most people don't want to be inconvenienced with a long stint in the hole for harming someone for something so small. But I slept with a pen cap hooked to my watch band holding a sharp pencil against my wrist in case I had to jab someone in defense. Living for days with the crippling fear of imminent doom messed with my nerves. My hands shake a little now. At number eight, controlling your nerves is hard for anyone. Knowing when to show them and when to be completely straight faced is harder. Day one, everything is just as scary as can be. You don't really know where you will be safe, if anywhere. Every time you're passing someone, are they going to shank you? Are they going to cold punch you in the face? Chow time was total panic mode. Hundreds of merciless thugs in a close group outnumbering the guards 25 to one. If something went down, you would be gone before order was restored. When incidents happen, you have to hide, but not cower. You have to keep your back to the wall so you can fend off any incoming strikes. As days went on, you became more aware of when to be alarmed, but there are plenty of sneak attacks that come out when all is calm. One time during Chow, a squad of a few people were coming to get someone and they had to pass my direction. They weren't coming after me, but I didn't know that until they passed me. That was another, the most scary moment. I was almost frozen, yet ready to throw down. You can't show emotions in these situations either. You can't let the dude sitting across from you see you panicking. At number seven, being a new inmate is hard enough. What makes it harder is when something crazy happens on your first day. Here's a horror story from an inmate's first day in jail. My very first time in jail when I was 18 was a bit of a trip. Went through the whole entry process where they make you feel like a piece of garbage, threaten you, etc. Then the group I was with were split up to head to different cell blocks. My foot was barely through the cell door when a siren started blaring and we were told to face the wall and not move. A bunch of guards rushed the cell block and after a couple of minutes, they rushed a guy covered in blood past us, followed by a guy I assumed was the cause of the blood. Find out later that they had an argument about a book. So one guy slashed the other's face repeatedly with a razor blade melted into a toothbrush. I thought that my entire stay was going to be filled with stuff like that, but I lucked out and knew someone in there, so I actually had it pretty easy. At number six, an inmate describes the sudden switch in culture, purpose, and the norms of actions. I suppose seeing people getting taken advantage of all the time and then not caring was the worst. New guys coming in and getting ripped off on trades and stuff. People with social developmental issues just getting their food taken from them. Also, the psychology of people without goals gets weird. What was worse was just becoming a part of that world. There are so many people there that have their rights taken away from them on a regular basis and don't care anymore. They choose to place value on being able to make others fear them. They stop thinking about the world beyond the walls and just get all wrapped up in the weird culture of the place. At number five, an inmate tells us what they think about the prison system and how it affects people inside and outside. I also think people underestimate how much our prison system really hurts people. Being in for not a long time and in a low risk tank didn't matter ended up with some PTSD. I couldn't fall asleep without a knife in my hand for the first four months I was released. I had nightmares and didn't sleep a night through sober for the same period of time. Our system does nothing to rehabilitate anyone. They throw you all together and take people who make stupid mistakes and expose them to hardened criminals 
who happened to be pretty good at leaving impressions on people. At number four, this guard explains his scariest experience at Rikers Island. I used to work as a prison guard on Rikers Island. I remember one experience that really sent a shiver down my spine, still does actually. This was when I was a bit of a novice. I had sort of an idea it would be hard, but I didn't know how hard. I was passing out pieces of chicken to the inmates and I handed a piece to this tall skinny guy and he still had his hand out. Give me another one. I figured he was trying to test my limits since I was the newest guard, so of course I told him no, because I didn't think I should send the message I could be pushed around. He got kind of mad, but for the time being, he cooperated. A couple days later, that same guy motioned for me to come over. Hey, don't you live on my exact address and your wife's name is my wife's name? I was stunned for a second there. I still have no idea how he found that out. You know, a little extra chicken is nice once in a while. At number three, a bone chilling occult incident happened to a guard at this prison. Here's what he said happened. One night, I was working in a different area, but I got a call on the radio. Flash, 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 offender in need of emergency medical care. That was the initiation of ICS and usually meant there was a problem usually a fight or severe injury. Turns out this was an execution and I swear this is something out of True Detective. There's an inmate face down in his bunk, tied up with bed sheets, deceased, with blood everywhere. The executed inmate was shirtless and had runes carved into his back. The other inmate was curled into a ball muttering, demons, demons. It turns out the executed inmate wasn't actually passed away, but really close to it. As for the executioner, no one could get a motive. One of the neighboring cellmates said he heard everything and described all the screams and the inmate saying the demons are coming. At number two, an escape plan that was found out by a guard early. I was a correctional officer in a maximum security prison for seven years. There were five inmates with life sentences on a prisoner work crew that I supervised that were planning an escape. One of my confidential informants calmly walked into my office one day and told me that they were planning on removing me in order to escape. That night, I searched the warehouse and found 14 shanks with my name on them. We got all the bad guys in the end. No one got hurt. At number one, a story so crazy it sounds straight from a movie for our number one spot. I spoke to a former inmate after his release who had developed severe PTSD from some of the things he witnessed while incarcerated. One of the stories was that he was playing cards with some guys and one of them was smoking a cigarette. Another inmate who was not playing with them approached the table and asked the guy smoking if he could get shorts on the cigarette. Shorts means before you finish smoking, you gave the cigarette to someone else so they got the last few puffs of the cigarette before putting it out. The smoker agreed. The inmate wandered off and they went back to playing cards. Well, the guy playing cards must have forgotten and finished the cigarette. A little while later, the inmate came back to the table asking for the short and the guy at the table told him that he had forgotten about it and finished the cigarette. Guy wanders off again and they go back to playing cards. Shortly afterwards, the inmate who wanted the shorts comes back to the table, comes up behind the player, pulls his head back and starts shanking him with a pen. Those are the top 10 scary prison horror stories that actually happened. If you like this video, press like and we'll see you next time.